Hello, you're watching Low Batteries, a look at video games through the lens of mental health. I'd just like to kick this episode off by saying thanks to all those who watched the first one. Your support was amazing, frankly, and it was truly humbling. Now, initially I wanted to use this second episode for a look at post-traumatic stress disorder, or PTSD, and how it's represented, or not, in video games like Spec Ops The Line or Call of Duty. But actually I'm going to save that topic for next time. Here's why. In the comments of the first episode of Low Batteries, which talked about games as an escape mechanism for people suffering from depression, anxiety and low mood, a lot of people said oftentimes they found they were too low to even attempt playing video games. That's something I hadn't really considered when launching into an episode about how useful playing games can be during difficult periods, but of course some people find it too difficult to play games when they're feeling low. What's more, that's perfectly alright. Oftentimes, mental health issues can make it difficult to get anything done, whether that be concentrating at work, at school, or in social situations, flipping on a games console, or even getting out of bed and putting some clothes on. Mental health issues are distracting in their own right, obviously, but sometimes the realisation that one isn't accomplishing anything can make matters worse, driving up stress levels and making it harder to do something. It's an unfortunate stress spiral that can prove really prohibitive if not tackled at some point. In some periods of extreme anxiety, I found myself thinking I'm not getting anything done, trying to do something productive and failing because I'm so stressed, and then getting more stressed about not getting anything done and starting the whole cycle again. It's pretty exhausting. Alternately, instead of focusing on how distracted they are and becoming too anxious to do anything about it, people can also simply feel too despondent to do anything, coasting along in a kind of standby mode and just waiting for it to pass. They're two very different states of being, one lethargic, one frenetic, both fairly debilitating. Now at this point you may be wondering what this has to do with video games, to which the answer is, at the risk of sounding like a nagging parent or a schoolteacher, productivity apps and gamification. Let me explain. One of the ways in which people are encouraged to battle their depression or anxiety is through cognitive behavioural therapy, or CBT. CBT is a kind of therapy aimed at recognising problematic thought patterns related to mental illness and how those thought patterns impact on that person's feelings and actions. You can imagine it as a kind of triangle. CBT aims to teach the sufferer how to recognise and interrupt those patterns, in turn making changes to their feelings and their behaviours for the better. Crucially, it doesn't seek to find the root cause of why you're depressed or anxious, but it aims to help you deal with the problems those conditions throw at you. One of the best techniques it taught me, alongside thought records, is list making. Now, this might seem painfully obvious, but when feeling despondent, making a to-do list and then ticking things off it can honestly help, even if the stuff on it is minor. In fact, especially if the stuff on it is minor. Writing down a list of achievable goals and then getting through them one by one can help build the momentum needed to tackle bigger things and eventually even take a swing at the thing that's troubling you. Now, these techniques tie quite neatly into gamification theory, which looks at ways in which rewards or game-like elements are added into services that might otherwise seem a little dull in order to encourage people to keep using those services. For example, think about how a running app will tell you when you've set a new personal best, or better yet, how an actual running game like Zombies Run will reward you with useful in-game items for exercising in the real world. Similarly, Foursquare built its entire user base around declaring people the mayor of something if they checked in often enough, adding a competitive incentive for users to keep interacting with Foursquare and essentially strengthen their business for them. Now, some of that might sound pretty cynical, but there are a few productivity apps out there designed to let you gamify your own life by positioning themselves as RPGs. Epic Win is my all-time favourite, though unfortunately it's only available on iOS devices, at least for the time being. In Epic Win, you choose a character, give it a name, and then make a bunch of quests for it. Each has a category like Strength, Stamina, Intellect, and Social, and you get to assign how much XP it's worth based on how difficult the task is, or how reluctant you are to complete it. Completing tasks helps you level up, and also earns you loot. It's deliberately very silly, but I found it really helped me keep on top of things. Mostly because you can stick anything in there and make it a goal with a reward attached. If I was struggling, for instance, I'd make a series of quests that started with make a cup of tea for 50 XP, and then I'd work up from there. 150 XP for laundry, because I really hate doing laundry, 200 XP for getting on top of my freelance invoices, 300 XP for making it to the social engagement I had but was reluctant to attend. It was a frippery, but I became really, really attached to Epic Win and to my character. 
While it helped me to do things I was dreading, I also always made sure to stick in quests for things I wanted to do as well, as a way to reward myself. Somehow it felt really important not to let the app only function as a to-do list for drudgery, but to let it be a reflection of my own experiences day to day. Because if I went to the pub and I had a pint with someone, that was still doing something right, I was still functioning, and the reward I got at the end of it, although essentially meaningless, actually made me feel better. Now if you don't have an iOS device and you can't get hold of Epic Win, don't despair, there are a bunch of similar apps like Task Hammer designed to do the same thing, I just really, really like Epic Win, is all. Now, this episode has been a bit tangential, but my point is that if you find you're too despondent to play video games or do something else, it's alright to admit that. It shouldn't be a point of shame. It might just be that you need to work up to something like that by way of doing a bunch of smaller things. To be honest, the rate of your progress is kind of irrelevant as long as you're making the effort to proceed. Slapping yourself on the back for going on a 10 minute walk or getting in the shower and putting on clean clothes might feel like a strange thing to do, but if that's what you need, then you should go for it. Anyway, thanks for watching Low Batteries. If you have any experiences of your own you'd like to share, or suggestions for future episodes, please leave them in the comments or fire me off a tweet. If there's something troubling you and you feel you may need to talk to someone, you can find links to helpful organisations in the description of this video. Thanks again for watching and take care.